A great many people, including survivors of these institutions, are angry and upset by what the government is doing. Are they wrong? Well, look, I know there, uh, myself and, and all TDs and senators have gotten a huge amount of communications from survivors of, of mother and baby homes over the last two weeks. Uh, and look, I acknowledge as minister, I should have done that. I, I needed to do a better job at communicating what the government was doing and engaging with survivors groups. Uh, and I know a lot of anxiety has been caused and I certainly deeply regret um, the fact that my failures to communicate properly caused that anxiety. But just to focus on what this piece of legislation does, um, the Commission of Investigation has been working over the last five years and it has established a database of all the women and children who passed through the main mother and baby homes and it's identified the dates wh in which they were in those homes. And that database can help the children connected with those homes establish their full identity. Now, under the existing law, the law under which the mother and baby homes was originally established, all the archives from the Commission's investigation have to be sealed for 30 years. But when we saw the value that this particular database could have for helping children establish their identity, we decided to act to ensure the database and the records that support it don't go into that archive. So we've passed that law to ensure the database and the supporting records are taken out of the archive. Uh, for the time being, they're given to Tusla to help Tusla with its, with its existing tracing services. And I've committed to bringing in new information and tracing legislation, and I'll bring that to the Dáil next year. And this database will be incredibly useful in helping children who were in the mother and baby homes establish their, uh, their, their identity. If, as you say, the fundamental problem here is the 2004 Act under which the Commission was established, why not amend that Act rather than introduce this legislation? The entire Commission of Investigation over the last five years um, has worked on the basis of the 2004 Act. And in the course of the debate yesterday, different deputies expressed different views. Some said uh, people should be able to access their personal information that's in the archive. Others said all elements of the archive should be opened. The entire thing should be opened. Um, and my concern, certainly with the latter proposal, is that if we allow that, um, when the Commission reports in uh, a week and a half's time, uh, there's a real risk that we'll see legal challenges to the Commission's report because people who engage with the Commission on the understanding of the existing law will then feel that, 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 that the, the legal protections around them have been completely withdrawn. But what I will say is I'm absolutely aware that particularly for personal information, the 30-year ceiling coming from the original law is really problematic. So what I stated in the Dáil yesterday um, is that I'm committed initially to engaging with the Attorney General to see what um, avenues there are there to address the 30-year issue, particularly with regard to personal information. But I also want to work with the Oireachtas uh, Committee on Children and work with colleagues uh, in, in, in the Dáil and Shannad and bring in survivor groups uh, bring in those academics who have been representing and supporting yeah, but should them you not to, have done to bring that. a solution. Should you not have done that before now? This commission has been sitting for five years. They knew about the 2004 legislation, as did politicians. So why this last minute rush without adequate consultation? Mm -hmm. the, the reason we've rushed is because of the deadline of the 30th of October. Um, once the Commission reports and the Commission has indicated that it is ready to report on the 30th of October, uh, once the Commission reports, it immediately stands dissolved at law and all its archive is sealed. And Why not then extend the life of the Commission? Because by extending the life of the Commission, we would have had to delay the submission of the final report. Um, and as you know, that final report was, was meant to come in two years ago. Originally, but people have already commission... waited five years. Could they not wait? Would they not be willing to wait another couple of months? I, I, I didn't want to ask survivors to wait more because I understand how eager they are to see 
the results of the Commission's investigation from the last five years. The report is going to be about 4,000 pages long. It's going to have specific chapters dealing with each of the mother and baby homes. It's going to have a chapter looking at the social, uh, the, the, the social history of Ireland at the time to try and put what was happening in the mother and baby homes in, in a wider context. And it's also going to have a chapter where people who gave their personal stories to the confidential committee of the commission where their those personal stories will be reflected so i think the commission's report is an absolutely is essential part of answering what happened in these mother and baby homes and i want to ensure that that gets published as quickly as possible but as i said earlier i am absolutely committed to addressing the issue of the 30 year rule and the very legitimate concerns that people have that their personal information is contained in that archive that decision on 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 sealing the archive was made uh, in 2015 when the commission was established under the original legislation i think we've all a, a greater understanding now of the importance of people's personal information. And I think some of the issues to do with the Mother and Baby Home Commission, they were reflected in a debate in the Dáil last year about the records of the Ryan Commission into the industrial schools. So I think we need to just take a step mm. back and consider how we treat this information and, yeah. and how we archive it appropriately. Just on that point, another point being put forward by campaigners and the opposition is that there is a role here for data protection legislation and the GDPR, that people are entitled to their own information. Have you fully explored that? Yeah, um, and uh, I, I, I would have, in, in the normal course, expected that GDPR um, would apply to the, to, to the archive. But when the GDPR was introduced in Ireland um, in 2018, the Commission of Investigations legislation, that 2004 Act, was amended to explicitly exclude GDPR from applying to the Commission's archive. So the Act was explicit, that was done explicitly in 2018. Now, I, I wasn't in the Oireachtas at that point, so uh, I, I don't know the thinking behind that. But that very explicit exclusion is what prevents the application of GDPR mm. in, in, do, in do this you, situation. Do you accept, but, though, that there are a number of experts, cons a considerable number of experts in this area who have made mm. this, you know, their life's work, yeah. and they disagree agree with that interpretation. So maybe yeah, uh, could you not go back to the Attorney General who gave you this advice and say, listen, can we look at this again? And that's exactly what I've I, I committed to do in, do in the doll yesterday, uh, Rachel. I absolutely accept that there are some very eminent experts in this area who, who disagree with the interpretation given by the Attorney General. So I have said, as well as looking at the 30 year rule, we need to look at the application of GDPR, again, to personal information that's contained in the archive. And indeed, it may be through um, an, uh, uh, some, some change in, in, in that exclusion that we can actually address both issues as regards access to personal information. I can completely understand how survivors want to get this information. Uh, Ireland has not put in um, good information and tracing legislation. My predecessor, Catherine Zappone, went a long way to try and in introduce that, but the, the bill she proposed didn't uh, was withdrawn from the Shannad. Uh, and it's my intention, and, and it was one of the first commitments I made as minister, to bring in proper information and tracing legislation so the people who have been denied access this, to this information so long can actually uh, secure their full identity. As you say yourself, though, you're talking here about people who have been consistently treated with a lack of respect by the state and by other institutions. Don't they have good reason to be sceptical about any official or political promises now? They do. Um, and again, I, I um, as I say, I should have done better in how I communicated how I, what I was trying to achieve with this particular piece of legislation. But I think it is clear uh, that there is strong support across the Oireachtas for um, bringing in changes that can properly secure people's um, people's personal information. Mm, but you and won't be changing it in the short term. That, that's your fundamental message. 
I believe that this bill is necessary to secure the database. Uh, and as, I've, as I as said at the start, this database is incredibly valuable and will have a, an immediate benefit for people who are who are undertaking, for people who were in a uh, mother and baby home and are seeking to, to trace okay. their identity. And just, just one so final... I, I believe it's important that this database is secured, taken out of the archive and is, is secured for okay. use.